Okay, so to begin, we're going to need a square sheet of paper. So I'm going to fold on the diagonal. I'm using this to measure and I should have a square because I'm using one side to measure the other side. And I'm going to make a couple of conditions. I would ask you what, what this shape is, but I've already said it. It's a square. And what makes a square a square? And some of the answers that you might give would be four sides. It's a quadrilateral, which means four sides. 90 degree angles, so all the angles are congruent. Um, and four congruent sides. And I'm going to say the length of the side is one, the length of this other side is one. The area of the square is one unit square. One square. Okay, we already have a diagonal here. If you already started with a square sheet of paper and you don't have a diagonal, make sure you fold so you have a diagonal line. And as we go along, the way we fold is the way we're going to cut. So, I'm going to cut on this diagonal. Now I'm going to ask you what the most specific geometric name is for this shape. And you're going to tell me a triangle and I'm going to say more specific and you're going to say maybe both sides are the same lengths. So maybe you're going to say isosceles triangle. And I'm going to say even more specific because triangles usually have a name about their angles and a name about their sides. And you told me about two sides being the same. So then you're going to say, oh, there's a right angle in it, an isosceles right triangle. That's great. And what's the area of this isosceles right triangle? And since we cut it in half, you're going to say one half. So what's the area of this triangle? Well, it's the other half, or I can put these two triangles together, and then I can use a word called congruent, which means the exact same size and shape, and say that there are two congruent right isosceles triangles. Wow, that's a mouthful. And they each have an area of one half. I'm gonna put one to the side for a minute and just work on this one. I'm gonna ask you to take the two acute angles of your triangle, fold them together, and if you're triangle. If your right isosceles triangle looks like mine, go ahead and cut on that fold line. And I'm going to put our other triangle back in here so we can refer back to our beginning square. Now what is the area? Oh, excuse me, let me ask first. What's the most specific geometric name for this shape here? And if you're thinking about that, I bet you're gonna notice that this is also an isosceles right triangle. Two sides the same length, this side's longer. And it has a lot in common with this triangle because I can fit it right in there. The angles are congruent but the sides are proportional. So this triangle is similar to this one. This triangle is congruent to this one. And what did you say the area was? Well, I'm gonna say that some students are gonna tell me one third and some students are gonna tell me one fourth. Great, I love it when there's an argument over math. So how are we going to solve that? Well, one way might be to imagine a line right here and see that there are four congruent triangles there. So one-fourth of the area is contained in one of these triangles. But I absolutely understand why someone might say one-third because there's one, two, three pieces here. So remembering one of those big ideas about fractions that it's 
uh, not how not just how many pieces but those pieces have to all be the same size okay we're done with these so I'm gonna go ahead and write one fourth on each of these pieces and put them to the side so I don't accidentally cut them and I'm gonna work on this large right isosceles triangle and this time I'm gonna put the two angles together but I'm not gonna fold I'm just going to pinch the hypotenuse so I have a little fold mark right there. And now I'm gonna take the right angle and fold it over to that hypotenuse. That way I don't have a fold line, because remember we're gonna cut on all our fold lines, so I don't want an extra fold line in there. I might accidentally cut. And I'm gonna cut on that fold line. If yours looks like mine, go ahead and cut there. Now what I want and you may want to pause the video for a second, is the area of this, I'll just say it, smaller right isosceles triangle. How can I figure the area of that? Okay, so I'm gonna say that you paused and you tried to figure it out for yourself. Um, always nice to figure out more than one way, which is great when you're working with several kids at a time because there's lots of ways to figure this out. One way would be that this is one half, this triangle all together, and I can see that this triangle fits in one, two, three, four times equally. So one fourth of one half is one eighth. And by the way, that would be a really nice statement to write somewhere. One fourth of one half is one eighth. Okay. But another way I might look at that is, gosh, can I put these back together and just see how many of those pieces fit in this whole thing? Well, we saw four there. And how about five, six, seven, Eight of them fit there. Wow, can you think of another way? I'm gonna let you dwell on that a little bit and we're gonna move on to this next piece. But I'm gonna agree that this is one eighth of the total. So I'm gonna write one eighth because we're finished with that piece. Now let me move on to this. What's the most specific geometric name for this shape? I heard you, it is a trapezoid. And I'm going to say it's an isosceles trapezoid because two sides are the same length. I'm going to fold my isosceles tra uh, trapezoid in half. And now I'm going to cut on the fold line. And if yours looks like mine, cut on that line. And we're not finished cutting on these, but I am going to warn you, we're going to do two different things with these pieces. So don't do the same thing twice just because the shapes are congruent at this point. I'm going to ask you to imagine, if you can, a line that divides this. Oh, by the way, what is this shape? You are absolutely right. This is also a trapezoid. It's not a, a symmetric looking one like this, but it's still a trapezoid. Is there a line that divides this trapezoid into a triangle and a square? You bet there is. If I take the acute angle and fold it over to that right angle, then open it back up, there it is. And cut right on that line. And now I want the areas of both of these pieces. So you might want to pause the, the video for a second and see if you can prove it, and maybe prove it more than one way. And you're back. So let's prove it a couple of ways. How about that? So uh, one way I heard was that this piece was 1 8th and you noticed that this triangle fit into this triangle two times. So maybe I'll make a little note here. You were saying 1 half of 1 8th equals 1 16th. Oh, I think that works really, really well. Cool. And then you might have used the idea that this was 1 16th 
to show that that square is actually two one sixteenths or two sixteenths. You can count it or you could multiply it. Okay. So I'm wondering about the relationship between this square and that shape right there. So two of them fit in there, two of them fit in there. So I think those both have the same area. Are they congruent? Don't think so because they're not the same shape, but they sure have the same area. So this also has an area of 1 8th, and this has an area of 1 16th. And there's more ways of proving that, but I'm gonna let you see if you can think of some other ways of doing that. Okay, now we're gonna work on this last piece, and this is not geometric language at all, but does this look like a shoe to you a little bit with the toe and the heel? Take the heel and fold it up to where the laces would go on the shoe. Okay, now we're back in the world of geometry again. You should get a parallelogram. I spoil it for you. A parallelogram and another little right isosceles triangle. I'm gonna cut on that line right there. And I bet you can tell me the area of this right isosceles triangle. Easy peasy because that is congruent to that. So this is also 1 16th. And could you prove for me the area of this parallelogram? So I'm seeing that if this fits there and then rotates and fits right there, there's also two sixteenths in this or one eighth. And I'm gonna write both answers because they're both great answers. Okay, there you have it. You just made a tangram and we figured the area of each of the pieces in the tangram based on an entire area of a square of one.